and look into the next area segment 14 appeals. So, here what is adjudication and what is appeals? So, that basic difference we need to understand. Adjudication refers to the process of deliberation between the taxpayer and the department for the purpose of passing an order is known as adjudication. That is, first department will give a notice and after notice, so they will be passing an order. That order can be assessment order or it can be demand and recovery order or it can be seizure order or it can be any order. Okay. So, adjudication is a phase. So, in that phase, what will happen? A notice will be given asking the person to pay the taxes and he need to give personal hearing or reply etc. And the outcome of adjudication will be order. So, either that can be assessment order or that can be you know demand and recovery order under 73, 74 or it can be even uh, you know inspection, confiscation order or it can be seizure order. So, any type of order that can be passed. So, that stage is known as adjudication. And what is the outcome of adjudication? One order. On that order, what we can do? We can go for appeal. So, that is the adjudication versus appeal. So, adjudication is a process commencing after issuance of show cause notice for passing demand order or adjudication order. Usually, that will be termed as order in original. And in this process, explanations are offered by the notice either in written or in person by requesting a personal hearing. And if notice admits the amount during that stage, he can pay that so that the order will not be passed. And who is the officer empowered to give the notice and pass the order? It is superintendent, lower level superintendent and above superintendent it will be ACDC, assistant commissioner, deputy commissioner and above that it will be additional or joint commissioner. So, commissioner will not pass any order, will not give any notice. So, these three people are only called as adjudication authority and even anti-profiteering authority is also called as adjudication authority. Anti-profiteering authority will be passing an order, anti-profiteering order for the purpose of you know not passing on the benefit of reduction reduction in tax rate to the consumers by reducing the price. So, tax rate has come down, but still you retain the same price means you did not pass on the benefit of reduction in tax rate to the consumers by reducing the price. So, then you have made a profit aid that is you have made a profit to recover that profit. So, they will be passing an anti profiteering order. Same way we have got more ITC. So, more ITC means our purchase price will come down. So, we need to pass on that benefit to our consumers by way of reducing the price, but we did not reduce the price. We retained the same price because of which we got more profit that is known as profiteering to recover that profit. So, they will be passing an anti profiteering order. Is it clear or not? So, that anti profiteering order is also equal to adjudication order on that we can go for appeal. Okay. So, now it, this has a small logic that you need to keep in mind that is first what will happen is that there will be audit that will be conducted. So, audit will be conducted or there will be inspection that will be conducted, audit or inspection. So, this is how department gets a entry, okay? audit or inspection or scrutiny, scrutiny of returns. Either they will conduct the audit or they will do the inspection or they will take up the returns for scrutiny. Okay? And so, this audit and inspection actually speaking this audit and inspection will come after taking the returns for scrutiny. The first point of communication between the assessee or the taxpayer and the department is returns only. Okay? So, a person will be filing returns and this returns will be taken up for scrutiny and after scrutiny of returns they will come to know that this person has to pay some tax. So, then only they will be ordering for audit or they will be doing inspection. And after this audit or inspection, they will come to know that some tax will be required to be paid. So, thereafter what they will do? They will proceed to give a notice. So, they will proceed to give a notice and they will be passing the order. So, show cause notice and thereafter demand or recovery order, demand order and that demand order will be passed under section 73, 
or 74 or 76. There are three demand orders 73, 74 or 76. So, what will happen? First returns will be filed by a person. These returns will be taken up for scrutiny and after scrutiny the department comes to know that there is some discrepancy. So, they will either order for audit or inspection and after audit or inspection, so they will gather the evidence. So, with that evidence, so they will be passing a show cause notice and after show cause notice, they will be giving a demand order. That demand order can be passed under section 73, 74 or 76 and during this inspection, this inspection can be in the premises. Inspection can be in the premises or inspection can be in the transit in transit okay it can be in premises or it can be in transit if the inspection happens inside the premises so then what they will do they will pass a seizure order they will pass a seizure order under section 67 and thereafter they will pass a confiscation order thereafter they will pass a confiscation order under section 130 and suppose if they do this seizure or that is inspection during the transit and they will come to know that a person is required to pay some tax and those goods are transported without valid documents. So then the seizure order, the seizure order will be passed under section 68 and thereafter one penalty order will be passed. So that penalty order will be under section 129 okay this is one side and then what will happen if the person is unable to file the returns so then why he is unable to file the return because he is unable to file like pay the tax so then what will happen here assessment orders will come which assessment order final assessment order or we have best judgment assessment order or summary assessment order so therefore inspection in the premises seizure order and what is the alternative for this seizure order which I said summary assessment order summary assessment summary assessment order and that summary assessment order will be under section 64 so which is an alternative to seizure order that is either they can pass a seizure order under section 67 and thereafter initiate confiscation order under section 130 or they can initiate summary assessment order under section 64 and here so there is something non filing of returns if returns itself is not filed so then there will be what order either so final assessment order final assessment final assessment order under section 60 then no 60 final assessment order under section 60 or best judgment assessment order best judgment assessment order under section 62 or 63 okay so this best judgment assessment order or final assessment order so now these are the various orders pa so this this when it will come if returns are not filed correct returns not filed if returns are not filed if returns are filed it will be like this scrutiny audit inspection like that if returns are not filed final assessment order or best judgment assessment order under section 62 63 so on this final assessment order under section 60 best judgment assessment order under section 62 63 demand order under 73 74 76 summary assessment order under section 64 confiscation order under section 130 and penalty order under section 129 on these orders we can go for appeals appeals against above orders appeals against above orders okay and seizure order under section 67 68 we cannot go for appeal appeal cannot be made against seizure order so we have various uh, cases appeal cannot be made in that one of the cases on seizure order we cannot make the appeal but on confiscation order penalty order can we go for appeals yes appeal against the above order so you understood the logic behind this everything okay so so therefore this this chart will be 
relevant like uh, you will be able to connect as to what is the process that is happening related to this and uh, so therefore after this adjudication order now appeal so that is there are multiple adjudication orders possible on these orders we can go for appeal now here one more point also i have missed that is if a person has you know got some uh, anti profiteering so even on anti profiteering order also they can go for appeal correct or not so one anti profiteering order anti profiteering anti profiteering order under section 171 anti profiteering order under section 171 also appeals can be made see all these handwritten notes will be there in the youtube uh, you know video description this i will be uploading so don't worry even if you have not written anything whatever i am scribbling or jotting down everything will be there so for reference purpose and then appeals so what is the first appellate authority commissioner appeals or additional commissioner appeals after that we will make further appeal to gstat after that further appeal will be made to high court after that further appeal will be made to supreme court but we can skip high court and directly go to supreme court in which case if the issue is pertaining to place of supply for the matters pertaining to place of supply after gst at further appeal lies with supreme court in gst at gst appellate tribunal there are two benches what are the two benches national bench or no national bench also known as regional bench state bench also known as area bench okay national bench or state bench national bench or state bench national bench will be hearing what issues place of supply and state bench will be hearing all other issues and the other name for national bench is regional bench and the other name for state bench is area bench so gst it is divided into two benches national or regional bench to hear place of supply state or area bench to hear other issues and we don't have the provisions relating to appeal to high court and supreme court because appeal to high court and supreme court are governed under the provisions of cpc civil procedure code and the outcome of the appeal order the appellate authority when we go for appeals so they will give one decision so the outcome of the appeal is known as appellate order or known as order in appeals the outcome of appeal is referred to as appellate order or order in appeals the outcome of the adjudication is known as order in original so same way the outcome of the appellate order is known as order in appeals and to whom we need to make the first appeal commissioner appeals or additional commissioner appeals so when we will go to commission appeals and additional commission appeals so simple logic so what is the department hierarchy who will pass the order adjudication authority who is the adjudication authority adjudication authority already we discussed adjudication authority is so supreme court adjudication authority so we have above above no additional or joint commissioner then assistant or deputy commissioner and thereafter below him superintendent superintendent now even you see first appeal authority first appeal authority who is the first appeal authority <laughs> commissioner appeals commissioner appeals commissioner appeals will not be equal to additional joint commissioner but below commissioner appeals we have additional or joint commissioner appeals so therefore logically when additional or joint commissioner passes the order we should not go for additional or joint commissioner appeals so then we need to go for commissioner appeals and below this that is acdc or superintendent passes the order then we will go for appeal to additional or joint commissioner appeals because additional or joint commissioner and additional or joint commissioner appeals both will be in the same hierarchy so how on this order we can go for appeal here that's why we need to go to the next authority so when we will go to commission appeals against the order of additional or joint commissioner when we will go to additional or joint commissioner against the order of officer below additional or joint commissioner below additional or joint commissioner means acdc or superintendent then what is the time limit within which the appeal should be made so if the registered person is going for appeal so 3 months plus condonation of delay 1 month and suppose if department wanted to file a review application so why review that is here who is passing the order 
adjudication order, additional joint commissioner or ACDC or superintendent who is their superior commissioner. So, commissioner may not be satisfied with that order. So, he wanted to check whether this order is correct or not. For that purpose, he will also go for review to the first appeal authority. So, that is this. Department also can go for review. So, a registered person will file appeal and department will go for review. What is the time limit for review against this adjudication order? 6 months plus condonation of delay 1 month. So, registered person going for appeal 3 months plus 1 month and department is going for review 6 months plus 1 month. And whether pre-deposit is required to be deposited, yes. So, how much is that pre-deposit? So, this pre-deposit is to be paid only by the registered person, not by the department. Department and all will not make any pre-deposit. So, registered person, how much is the pre-deposit? 100% of the admitted due. So, out of the total order amount, how much is admitted? So, that amount we need to pay first and plus 10% of the disputed tax. So, due wise, tax, interest, penalty, everything, admitted due, whereas disputed only tax. So, disputed tax, how much? 10%. 10% of the disputed tax, but this 10% of disputed tax is subject to maximum 25 crores. Also, one more point to remember that is wherever we come across interest, wherever we come across interest, interest, then late fee, interest, late fee, penalty, okay, interest, late fee, interest under GST, late fee under GST, penalty under GST or any appeal fee, any appeal fee under GST. All these things are given only for CGST Act. CGST Act means the equal amount we need to pay under SGST Act. Equal amount we need to pay under SGST Act. So, the sum of these two is only called as no IGST Act. Now, in the exam, they have given compute late fee. Okay. Now, we need to do both as per CGST Act as well as SGST Act. And suppose if they give compute late fee under IGST Act, then we need to compute as per CGST Act, SGST Act. Suppose if they say compute penalty under CGST Act, only CGST Act. Compute interest under CGST Act, only CGST Act. So, a description also no problem, but in MCQs only there will be a problem. So, what they will ask? They will ask penalty under CGST Act and in the options they will give penalty under CGST as well as penalty under IGST that is two, sum of CGST, SGST and we will scratch our head which penalty we need to select, both are correct only. You understood what I am telling? So, for example, here subject to maximum 25 crores. Okay. Suppose if the disputed taxes, if the disputed taxes say 500 crores, 500 crores is the disputed tax, 500 crores into 10 percent, so that is 50, but subject to maximum 25. So, in option we will have 25 crores, option B 50 crores, which is correct answer, 50 crores is correct answer. Why 50 crores is correct answer? Uh, the tax is given as 500 crores. Tax 500 crores means what? So, in this 500 crores, we have CGST 250 crores and SGST 250 crores. So, therefore, pre-deposit will be CGST into 10 percent, 25 crores, subject to maximum 25 crores. So, same way SGST 10% 25 crores subject to maximum 25 crores. So, what is the total pre-deposit? The total pre-deposit will be 50 crores. Suppose if they say pre-deposit payable under section 107 of CGST Act, then option A 25 crores. Okay. And suppose if they say pre-deposit payable by that person, no act reference pre-deposit payable by that person. So, 50 crores. You understood or not? So, whenever they give specifically the CGST Act in the question, so then the CGST related component only you do. And whenever they give generally like interest, late fee, penalty, but they did not say which act. You understood or not? Then in that case, you need to do both as per CGST Act as well as as per SGST Act total it and then select the option. So, descriptive not a problem. 
because you will clearly write CGST act like that. So, therefore, there won't be any problem. But in MCQs only, we will be facing this difficulty. Is it clear or not? Because last exam, 129 section 129 one question came in that 129 clearly they asked section 129 of cgst act means if you write the penalty when the owner is not coming forward 50 percent of the value of goods enough that is correct and some students have written so penalty payable 50 percent under cgst 50 percent under sgst so this much penalty is payable so for that the answer is given as wrong they have not awarded marks okay why they have not awarded marks the student has given sir whatever you said that only sir i have written yes he written correctly only but he did over action what is that over action question is what cgst act why are you doing as per IGST Act? If the question is as per IGST Act, you do as per IGST Act. When the question is as per CGST Act, you restrict yourself to CGST Act only. You understood? Then, so that is this pre-deposit not applicable in case of department appeal, 100% of the admitted due, 10% of the disputed tax, subject to maximum 25 crores. Okay. And for that reason, interest do not compute 18 percent under CGST, 18 percent under SGST. Aya, daivame, no, no. So, tax sar set, tax into 18 percent CGST into 18 percent SGST, no. If you take CGST and compute 18 percent, ah, correct. Total tax do not compute 2 times 18 percent. CGST tax 18 percent, SGST tax component 18 percent, that is correct, okay. But total tax if you take and do 2 times 18 percent computation gone, okay. Rest in peace, indirect tax exam rest in peace. Then pre-deposit shall be 25 percent of penalty under section 129, that is on section 129 order also we can go for appeal na penalty order under 129. When we go for appeal against penalty order 129, how much will be the pre-deposit? 25 percent of the penalty, but only in case of first appeal. So, very, very important. When we go for second appeal against this penalty order, so whether we need to pay any pre-deposit? No. Why? Why no need to pay? Because look into the second appeal, the pre-deposit in case of second appeal is 100% of the admitted due plus 20% of the disputed tax, but here penalty. So, which means we do not have to pay any pre-deposit because penalty 10% of disputed tax, 20% of disputed tax, not penalty. So, therefore, here on what we are going for appeal penalty order. So, therefore, on penalty order only in case of first appeal. 25 percent, second appeal we do not have pre-deposit at all. Then that is the reason why in the first appeal itself they are collecting 25 percent. When we go for second appeal against penalty under section 129, there is no pre-deposit. That is the reason why in the first appeal stage itself they are collecting 25 percent. Then any fee for first appeal, no. And time limit for disposal of appeal, one year and it is not mandatory. Then second appeal, second appeal we need to make to whom? Second appeal to GSTAT against whose order? Commissioner appeals order or uh, additional commissioner or there is one more authority called as revisional authority. On that revisional authority order also we will go for appeal to GSTAT. What is the time limit? If assessee is going for appeal within 3 months plus 3 months and when department is going for appeal 6 months plus 3 months, the regular time limit only. First appeal 3, 6 plus 1 plus 1, here 6, 3, 6, plus 3, plus 3, okay. 3 months plus 3 months, department 6 months plus 3 months. Pre-deposit not applicable in case of department appeal, 100 percent of the admitted due. Sir, already we paid 100 percent admitted due here. This is admitted due in the first appeal. This is between first appeal to second appeal if there is any admitted due. Plus 20 percent of disputed tax, this is subject to maximum 50 crores, 50 crores under CGST means under IGST it will be 100 crores. Same way here subject to maximum 25 crores under CGST. If it is IGST double, okay. Then fee not applicable in case of department appeal, 1000 rupees for every 1 lakh subject to maximum 25,000 rupees. So that is the appeal fee payable. 
again appeal fee also CGST, SGST. For example, so tax on which you are going for appeal. So what is the dispute here is tax. So tax in dispute, tax in dispute and this tax in dispute CGST, SGST. So CGST is 14,56,000, SGST 14,56,000. Now what is the appeal fee? What is the appeal fee? 1000 rupees for every 1 lakh or part thereof. So therefore, 15,000. Here, 15,000. But sir, maximum is only 25,000. That is under each act. That is under each act. Suppose, if CGST, SGST, so it is 28 lakh 32,000 and 28 lakh 32,000 is the tax in dispute is the tax in dispute. Then what is the appeal fee? So the appeal fee will be 25,000, 25,000. So maximum 25,000 under CGST, SGST like that. Then what is the time limit for disposal of appeal? Same one year and it is not mandatory. Now third appeal, third appeal we will go to whom? High court against whose order? GST AT order if the issue is other than place of supply and time limit assess your department within 180 days, within 180 days from the date of GST order, GST AT, Appellate Tribunal order, we will go for appeal to High Court and plus unlimited condonation of delay. Pre-deposit and fee is as per CPC, Civil Procedure Code and appeal to Supreme Court, fourth appeal. When appeal to Supreme Court against whose order? Either High Court order or GST AT, National Bench order that is place of supply and time limit pre-deposit and fee everything is as per CPC and matters relating to question of law we can go up to Supreme Court but if the issue is pertaining to question of fact then GSTAT. So GSTAT is the final fact finding authority. So what is the difference between question of law and question of tax? So I am selling a product and what rate I need to pay tax? I am selling say for example I am selling one product by name soft serve. Okay soft serve like ice cream only but it is not ice cream okay it is not ice cream okay but the product name is soft serve because only when we use dairy product it should be called as a ice cream I am not using dairy product in that so there are lot of ice creams which are being sold without any dairy product so dairy product will not be there made up of vegetable oil so vegetable oils, using vegetable oils they make the ice cream, okay. So that is actually bad for health. Dairy element if it is there, it is okay, good for health. So if you see quality walls, etc. and all that will be made out of vegetable oils, okay. And so therefore I am selling a product like ice cream, but not, it is not called as ice cream, it is called as soft serve like that, okay. And therefore whether for this soft serve, the rate applicable to ice cream is, 0% but the rate applicable to any other product made up of edible oils will be 12%. So whether 12% is applicable or nil rate is applicable. So this is a question of law. Now whether a product which I am making is ice cream or not is a question of fact. You understood. Which rate is applicable is question of law and whatever product that I am making is first of all ice cream or not is a question of fact. You understood the difference clear? So then question of law, question of fact and whenever I am making sale to a related person, which rule to be taken? Rule 28 and but related person or not is a confusion. The transaction is between related person or not. So therefore question of law, is it covered under related party transaction or not is a question of law. You understood or not? And whether recipient is eligible for full ITC or recipient not eligible for full ITC is a question of fact. Because once we go for rule 28, if recipient is eligible for full ITC, open market value is deemed to be transaction value. Otherwise, open market value needs to be determined. First of all, is this transaction a related party transaction as per the definition of related or not is a question of law. Okay, it is related party transaction, but recipient is eligible for full ITC or not eligible for full ITC is a question of fact. 
So, if the recipient is eligible for full ITC, one provision. If recipient is not eligible for full ITC, another provision. Like that, question of law, question of fact. So, who is the final fact finding authority? GST 18. And substantial question of law involved, we can go up to Supreme Court. And monetary limits for appeal. So, with respect to assessee, GST 80, is there any monetary limit? Yes. 50,000 rupees, which means that I am a registered person. I am going for appeal to GST 80. The amount involved in the appeal does not exceed 50,000. Now, GST 80 may not you know, accept the appeal because there is a monetary limit of 50,000. For 50,000 dispute and all, we cannot go to GST 80 and waste their time. That is the meaning. For department, not yet notified. Then, interest on refund of pre deposit. Actually, whenever I go for first appeal and second appeal, I am paying some extra amount. That is 10% of the disputed tax and 20% of the disputed tax. Admitted anyhow I have to pay, I paid. But what extra I paid is 10% of disputed tax, 20% of disputed tax. Now I won the appeal. Now I will get the refund with respect to that. And what is the interest rate? 6% per annum. And from when it will be computed? Here it is not 61st day and all. So here it is from the date I deposited till the date I am getting as refund. So here no application and no 60 days etc. and all. So today I deposited, today I made a pre-deposit from today till the date they are giving me. So interest will be computed at 6%. And what is the time limit within which the pre-deposit should be returned? That time limit they have not given, let it be, it's okay. Because I am getting 6%, I don't have any problem from day one, you understood. Then, there are some orders on which appeal cannot be made. Non-appealable orders can be asked for short note. What are those non-appealable orders? Number one, I want that officer only. So, like that we cannot ask the no appeal. So, that is, there is a transfer of proceeding from one officer to another officer. Already you have been interacting with one officer. Now, there is a transfer of proceeding. I need that officer only. How can you pass an order for transfer of proceedings? No. So, on that we cannot go for appeal. And thereafter, so there is a EMI facility that will be given. So, that is whenever you have to pay some outstanding amount. So, demand order, EMI facility will be given maximum 24 EMIs. Maximum 24 EMIs, but department can choose any EMI. So, they have given 18 EMIs, okay. But you are asking, no, no, I need 24 EMIs. On that, you cannot go for appeal. Then, imprisonment order. Imprisonment order means what? So, the court will pass. This imprisonment order is not passed by the officer. Imprisonment order is passed by the court. So, on that appeal cannot be made and seizure order appeal cannot be made. So, total four orders. Order transferring the proceeding from one officer to another officer, seizure order and prosecution order that is imprisonment order and order sanctioning payment of dues in installments. Then, revision authority. Revision authority under GST. So, revision authority will take up the adjudication orders for revision purpose. So, whenever an adjudication order is passed by the department, so revision authority is an independent authority, so like a whistleblower, so they will be coming and taking the adjudication order for revision and either on their own motion, but can revision authority take up the appellate order for revision? No, only adjudication order, but appellate order and all they cannot take up for revision and revision authority may on its own motion voluntarily or upon information received by it. So, that is one person will say, sir, whatever order that officer is passing is not correct. So, maybe based on that or on request from the commissioner, call for and examine record of any proceedings. And suppose if the revision authority considers that the decision or order passed is erroneous, in so far as it is prejudicial to interest of revenue, illegal or improper or not taken into account certain material facts. So, order is erroneous. Why it is erroneous? Maybe it is prejudicial to interest of revenue or it is illegal or improper or not considered certain material facts. Then in that case, the revision authority will stay such order and after making further enquiry, pass an order enhancing that is increasing or modifying that is reducing or annulling, annulling. So, that is cancelling. So, the said decision or order. Then, no revision in certain cases, when, whenever we go for appeal against an order, then revision authority will not touch that order. So, because either registered person can go for appeal against that order or department can go for appeal against that order. Once we go for appeal, which means anyhow appellate authority will check that, that is the reason why revision authority will not touch that order, okay. 
suppose in that adjudication order on few grounds we go for appeal on few grounds we did not go for appeal on those grounds on which we did not go for appeal with respect to those grounds only you know the revision authority can take up the order for revision order has been subject to appeal however revision authority may pass an order on any point which has not been raised and decided in an appeal then b order already taken up for revision that is once first I am taking adjudication, I am one revision authority, I am taking the adjudication order for revision and on merits I did not pass any revision order means I drop, means according to me everything is correct. Now you are another revision authority, can you take up this order for revision? No, okay, you understood or not. So this you can remember, so it is like, na thottadu ni thodakudadu, you understood, na thottu edavadu panna ni edum panna kudadu. At the second point, order sought to be revised is a revision order. Okay, I took up the order, I revised it. Again, you cannot revise it. It is mine. Okay, I have revised it. You understood or not? Can you touch my property? How you can touch? You cannot touch my property like that. And suppose if I put kerchief on something, can you touch? No. If I have taken something, can you touch that? No. Okay. So that is the meaning of that. So what are the three cases? Three cases revision is not possible. Number one, if the order is subject to an appeal or order has been taken up for revision or order sought to be revised is a revision order and time limit for taking the order for revision. So what is the time limit? So appeal has been filed. If appeal has been filed, sir, if appeal is filed, we cannot do the revision. No, no, we can definitely do the revision. But that revision will be with respect to few points on which appeal has not been Filed, filed. So then three years from the adjudication order or one year from the appellate order, whichever is later. So one year from the date of order in such appeal or three years from the date of adjudication order, whichever is later. And suppose if appeal is not filed, so revision authority can take up the order for revision after six months. Why after six months? Because first six months either registered person can go for appeal or department can go for appeal. Na. So that is why not first six months not possible. So after six months from the date of adjudication order and three years from the adjudication order means in the two and a half years they can do the revision. Then period to be excluded in computing the limitation period of three years that is when the issuance of revision order is stayed by the court that is this three years we have three year time limit while computing the three year time limit period of stay should be excluded. Also suppose if uh, there is some other case similar issue similar issue is pending in the court of law so till the time of disposal of that appeal so the decision cannot be given that is revision authority cannot pass the revision order that is time spent in appeal under similar issue similar issue in tribunal to high court and high court to supreme court that period also will be excluded 